Hi, my name is John Bertels, and I brought some materials here for building musical instruments, which is part of the educational ideas that you have to do along with the project. So, uh, Joe, I mean, you can see that I brought a lot of my garbage with me here. Well, what led you to decide to include these, I guess, found objects? that have the potential for making musical instruments. Well, you know, all around the world when people build musical instruments, they build it from whatever is in their backyard. And, you know, if you're living in the tropics, you're going to use bamboo to make a flute or something like sure. that. If you're near a river bank, you might use the clay to make something like a gourd flute or something like that. Well, I live in New York City, and what's in my backyard is garbage. <laughs> and, of course, you know, that's what a lot of these things are. Actually, these materials are all easily found all across America. So, I mean, this is just really everyday, ordinary, recycled and reused materials. Uh -huh. here. Okay. Okay, very okay. good. Okay, so starting, um, basically, the first thing is just getting some of the concepts of how music musical instruments uh, start, uh, right. working. So I think the first thing is just to, the idea of that something has to vibrate. So oh, on right. all musical instruments, whether you're in one of the four families of instruments, something has to vibrate. Mm -hmm. It's a string, an air column, yeah. um, you know, a, a, a xylophone piece of wood, whatever. So in this case, I've got something that's going to vibrate here. This is just a metal pipe. This is called a conduit pipe. And I'm going to take a stick and hit the pipe. Now, you'd expect it to make a ding, right? right but right. it's not because I'm holding it, and I that's the stopping the vibration. So the next thing is to put it on something that allows it to vibrate, and this is styrofoam. Now, styrofoam is a lot of air inside. It's very light, but it's also got a good strength to it. So now I can hit it again. Ah, and you can very see different quality to the sound, isn't Exactly, it? yeah, and if I touch it, too, you can see that it stops. Uh -huh. Okay, so that's the vibration side of it. So the vibration is the most important thing for building musical instruments. The next step is to get them louder, because on some instruments, you know, you need to have things a little bit louder. String instruments are always problematic. That's why, for example, in an orchestra, you have like, you know, 40 string instruments sure, and just exactly. maybe one clarinet. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in my case, for example, I've got a string instrument here, which is a tennis racket. I cut all the strings that go across this way which means you probably shouldn't do it with your mom or dad's <laughs> tennis racket, okay? So I'm gonna go like this, and you can see it's pretty soft. Very soft. But when Very I put soft. it onto a box, like my styrofoam box here, which works like, like a resonator, is, uh, is just like this. Ah, amazing transformation of the sound. Exactly, it gets it much louder, that's Incredible. right, yeah. Okay, now another example of that, because that's just the string instruments. The next example is to put cones at the end of something, but then oh. that's a wind instrument. Now that works with brass, that works with woodwinds, with the exception of the flute. Okay. And here's a brass instrument, this is just a metal pipe of some kind. I think this is actually like part of a lamp, something uh -huh. like that. I'm going to buzz my lips inside it, just like a brass instrument. <laughs> You can see it sounds okay, mm -hmm. but now we're going to get it louder by putting a cone at the end. So if you take my construction cone here, okay. I put this right inside there, and now let's see how that changes the, uh, the sound. Uh, louder? Definitely louder. Okay. And is that the function of the cone then, to increase the amplitude of the exactly, sound? Exactly, that's right. It focuses the sound waves so that so Does that it really also change the color of the sound? Well, mm -hmm. yes, it, it can change it the can. color and, and the timbre as well, but, and also it can change the pitch, because change if it's pitch. long enough, it can make it a little bit yeah. lower as well. All right. So I'll let you proceed with your demonstration. Okay, great, thanks. So the next thing is, uh, that's important is getting different pitches, and there's two possible ways to get different pitches on your musical instruments. One is to make things longer and shorter, or bigger and smaller, and uh, to demonstrate that, I've got my xylophone here. Now, the xylophone is different sized pieces of wood mounted on an old desk drawer with some foam rubber to allow the pieces of wood to vibrate. So if I go like this, the longer the piece of wood, the lower the pitch. like that, okay? The other way to get different pitches is to make things tighter and looser or stiffer and, or less stiff. And the example of that is the bottle base, which is one of your instruments that, that's in your package. In this case, what we've got is a fishing line here, a, some kind of a plastic bottle here, and this is a, uh, like a broomstick or something like that. This is the vibration. This makes it louder. Now I'm going to get the different pitches by changing the length. So that works exactly like the xylophone does, but the other way to get different pitches with a string instrument is to make things tighter and looser. So in this case, I've got a rubber band here, which is pretty loose. If I pull it tighter, it vibrates faster, and faster, and finally really fast. I'm going to have to watch my eyes. So there we go. Okay. Now, 
What I've done is I've brought some of the musical instruments that are a little more difficult to explain in your package, because I think it's easier for you to actually see it done on video, and then it is to explain the words that, ha that are in the package. But I think you'll get a good idea of how these things go here. So we're going to start um, with the string family. And first of all, I've got sort of my four different rubber bands here. which is a rubber band box guitar, it's in your instructions. But now the next thing is to make something like a tubiola or a tubalin, and that is this one right here. Now the way you have to do this first is you have to take a pretty substantial cardboard tube, and you can see just how thick that cardboard tube is there. And then the next thing is you have to put some slits into it to make sure that, that the uh, strings are going to get anchored. There's two different strategies of doing the slits. One is just to use a little pocket knife, pretty sharp. I'm going to do one side like this, so I'm going to go three slits, nice and easy. Obviously, this is a step that you probably want to do rather than children doing. Okay, and then the, from the other side, going right to make sure that the three slits are over there, I'm going to use the other strategy, which is using a coping saw, which is a pretty thin blade with some pretty small teeth, and just sort of making sure it's set up the same way. And like that, like that like that. And those are our three slits on that side. Now the next step is to take the fishing line. And this is like 40 pound test uh, fishing line. You can use lighter uh, gauge fishing line as well, but the problem is that it gets softer as it gets lighter. So this is, uh, I like 40 to 60 pound test. Making one knot, and I'm going to make another knot, and that double knot at the end there means that I can put it inside one of these slits and pull it nice and tight like that. So you can see it's pretty well anchored there. Now the next step is to put it through some kind of a resonator. And the resonator that I've been using are these uh, sort of dog or cat food cans. They're pretty thin aluminum. And what you have to do is you have to poke holes into it. So I'm going to poke three holes going across the can kind of like that. So one there, like that, one there, and one there. So you can see the three holes going across this way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the end of that fishing line thing, which is still unattached to the other side, and put it through, making sure that this corresponds to this hole there. I'm going to put it right through like so. Pull it out the other side. And then on the other side, we have to attach it as well. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to make a knot, just like I've done before, but this time it's a little bit further along the end of the tube, so it has to be pulled tight. So I'm going to make a single knot and a double knot, just like so. Stretch it on so it goes right into the slit. And then you slide this off to one side. Now you can see what's going on is that the can is actually interfering a little bit. So there is a trick to that, and the trick is to bend the can a little bit so that it sticks kind of like that right there. And then you can see that a little bit better in this example right here of the finished instrument with three different strings going across to the three holes anchored in on this side and the little bend right there so as the can stays nice and tight. So you can play it like this. But since this is a tubalin or tubiola, you probably want to put it up like this. And I've got my sort of fake bow here and... Not quite Bartok, but, or Schwantner, but there it is. Okay. So then the next step is uh, to do some percussion instruments. And for my percussion instruments, well, percussion instruments are basically anything you can shake, scrape, or hit. And this is all fulfilled nicely with this one instrument, which is the coffee can. I've got some rice or beans inside. So I've got my maraca. Now I can take a pencil or a stick and scrape it up and down the ridges. So I've got my guido. I've got my drum. And I've also got my metal drum. So four different instruments in one right there. Now, if you wanted to get different pitches from your percussion instruments, all you have to do is have a whole bunch of cans. And there it is. And just you can use pencils or sticks. Something like that. So that's another possibility for doing percussion type instruments. Now there is one percussion instrument that's in your, in, uh, your packet of instruments to look at that's a little more complex to build, and that is the balloon, um, the balloon drums. And I have just an example here which I'm going to put together for you. Take a pretty large balloon. This is, I believe, a 12-inch balloon. Take a pair of scissors, snip off the valve. You can see right there what I'm doing. I'm just getting off the valve at one end, like so. 
Okay? Now I'm just going to stretch this over the top of the cardboard tube there. So I just have to pull it open, stretch it across like this, and pull it down relatively tight. I don't want to make it too tight because I've got a, a smaller one here, which I want to make sure that has a higher pitch. So, and good. Good pitches there. Now I've got some tape, which I've preset here. And the reason I've got the tape is so that the balloons don't, like, fly off the tube. Okay, so we got like something like this. And then Joe, I'm going to need your assistance here, so come on back on camera for a second. And what I have to ask you to do is to hold these two together just like that. And I'm going to take these and tape this around like so. That's one. And then we're going to hold it like that on the other side because it does tend to be a little bit unsteady. I'm going to go around like this one more time. And there are our tube drums. And if you're working with kids, you're going to find pretty quickly that the kids are going to discover that this is one way to play it, pinching it and pulling it like that. I wouldn't use a stick, however. Okay, so then the next thing is going on, let's take a look at some woodwind instruments. Now, woodwind instruments are basically two different kinds. You've got flutes and you've got reeds. And I've got something which is the panpipe flutes, which are right here. Now, the panpipe flutes are the only instrument that you'll probably be able to make in all these things that really have a good way of getting the 12-tone Western kind of system. And that is if you measure these, these, uh, these uh, straws in the right kind of way. These are just black plastic straws here. And what I've done at the end is I've put some modeling clay. Now, this is the kind of modeling clay that doesn't dry out. And that means that it stays nice and tight because you have to close up the bottom. So here's an example of uh, just a pla black plastic straw that I cut, which is the correct length. I'm going to take a little piece of modeling clay here, and you can see it's uh, still malleable. So I'm going to put it right onto the bottom like this. <coughs> Sounds okay. So I'm going to put it onto the end of the pan pipe right there. Now I want to put this piece of wood here because that gives it a little bit of structural integrity and makes it a little stronger to hold and so forth. And then I'm going to wrap the tape around just like this. And now I've got my pan pipes. Something like that. Okay. Now to get to the, um, the other kinds, the reed instruments, my personal favorite for the reeds are the plastic straws. And here I have a regular old plastic straw. It could be straight, it could be a bendy straw. It doesn't really make any difference. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten down the end of the straw, smoosh it down with my fingernails like this. And then the next step is to cut a double reed there by going snip with one corner like this and snip with the other corner like that. This makes kind of a double point like that. If I put my fingers right about there, that's where I'm going to put my lips. I'm going to bite down with my lip like that and push the air through the straw using my stomach muscles, my diaphragm. Now the next step, of course, is to get different pitches, and to do that, I'm going to need my little pocket knife. And here it is here. Now you can use any little scissors, like a little toenail scissors or anything like that. I'm going to put four holes, starting about maybe right about there and then going down to the end. If you put them right up to the mouthpiece, it's really hard to do. So here's what you do. You have to go like this, snip once, go from the other side, snip again, and you can see a little diamond-shaped hole pops out. I'm going to do the same thing here here and here. I'm going to do it from the other side, like so. And now, if I've got them just right, I should be able to play them. Something like that. So then finally we've got our last group of instruments, which is the brass instruments. Now with brass instruments, there are always going to be tubes of air that you buzz your lips inside. And if you have a relatively short tube of air, something like this, it's really only going to get one pitch. So here we go. With a longer tube, something like this one, of course you all recognize the French hose, okay? With a longer tube like this one, you can get a lot of different pitches, as any brass player will tell you. Kind of like a bugle. Um, if you've seen somebody playing a bugle and you're wondering how they're getting all those pitches without using the valves. And that's because if you put more energy into the system, you can get higher pitches. <laughs>
Now, there is another way to get different pitches with brass instruments. And of course, if you've ever seen an orchestra, which I'm sure you have, then of course you know about that trombone. And here's my trombone. Okay, this is just a cardboard tube, and it fits into another cardboard tube kind of like this. Now, it is important that the two tubes are pretty close in size. In other words, enough that you can move them back and forth, but really with no airspace in between them. The longer it is, of course, the lower the pitch. So there is a whole bunch of really cool and really easy musical instruments that you guys can put together. And it's really a lot of fun. You'll find that whoever you're working with really is going to enjoy these a lot. And they're really pretty simple as well.